creativity is an addiction. Well, I know I'm addicted to it because I have to live off it. I crave it. I have to have it. I drive in a vehicle that was created by somebody else. Creativity. I listen to music that was created by somebody else. Creativity. I have to have it. And so do you. Unplug because we will always say yes to creativity. Totally uncut because we all make mistakes. So turn it into a tool. This is Arrow Unplugged. Huh. This is pretty interesting. The words that I type onto the face of a computer... Ah, and then I take a sip of coffee and get myself mentally and physically prepared. I typed onto the computer, are we buckling up or are we buckling down? How do you feel in this present day? Are you buckling up or are you buckling down? I have this nasty habit every morning that I wake up. Before I write, before I step into the studio, before I go to my essential job, I've got to get caught up with the headlines. I don't know why. I Well, I do. Because I've had people in my past tell me it's because you're trying to measure the distance between you and what is wrong. Here in North Carolina yesterday, a teenager, a teenager took the lives of five innocent people in Raleigh. Are you buckling up or are you buckling down? I speak with you and I share with you this morning as the sun is rising in this beautiful forest in South Charlotte, North Carolina, and the rays of light that are hitting these these needles on these white pines and and the and the elm and and my God, this forest is going. Good morning, human. And I'm asking it, are you buckling up or are you buckling down? Hey, it's Arrow. This is the choice. This is what I was writing while the sun was waking up on a brilliant new day. And today we're reading from October 14th, 2022. One of my co-workers at the essential job is a preacher. He is a proud Southern preacher. And I say Southern in a very strong way because everything that you've read about Southern preachers is everything that this man is. I asked him last night if the higher power has spoken into his heart about our current global conditions. And he said, you know, I've never been one of those into the world, God-fearing leaders, but I'll tell you something isn't right in this moment, and more eyes need to be turning to the sky. That's what he said. He didn't say that things were going to buckle up or buckle down. He didn't say that, you know, we should be, you know, in fear. We shouldn't be, you know, going, oh my God, what are we going to do? No, he didn't say that. He just said more eyes should be looking up to the sky. Which is a change from where we stood in March of 2020 when I sat down with spiritual leaders and we talked about COVID-19, how the pandemic was changing things, not just here in the States, but all over the planet. And all I heard from those, the blessed figures of the pulpit, this too shall pass. I heard that so much that I became numb to it. A lot has unfolded during these nearly three years. The hearts of billions of people have changed and have been challenged. The majority of us have only heard about the threat of major bombs in the 50s and 60s. Today, it's part of our thread. All you have to do is go on to CNN, NBC, ABC, whatever website you get for your news. Someone's talking about it. That one threat and someone in North Korea that continues to just practice They're just practicing. Hmm. Learning how to live with this threat or practicing teaches you the rules of buckling up or buckling down. This is a real conversation, but not too many people are diving into it. I write about it because it's who I am as a daily writer. I'm not a historian. I'm a silent watcher on a very noisy planet. I'm Arrow, and that's what I was writing while the sun was waking up on a brilliant new day.